So I love, welcome, welcome. I love having these sessions. These are so powerful. And I think I'm gonna do this one a little differently than the one that I had a couple of weeks ago. We're just gonna play with this. Welcome, if you're new to my world, I recognize some of your faces from social media, Instagram, LinkedIn. Um, if you're new to me, my name is Sarah and I'm a feminine embodiment coach. I help women through the process of working with ma masculine and feminine energies, the polarity there, including the dark feminine. Ooh, it's not scary, I'll explain that, the dark feminine. And I like to use mythology and archetypes to really help women heal the wounded feminine energy and really activate their divine feminine essence and come into their power, activate their magnetism. So we're gonna talk a little bit about all of this. There can't, the conversation's gonna flow sort of organically, there'll be plenty of time to un unmute and share and raise your hand. And there's a little button around here where you can ask a question. Um, feel free to engage in the chat box with each other as well. Like there's, um, if you have it, lots of times there's conversations going on behind the scenes with all the ladies. And so feel free to support each other behind the scenes there. I try to, I not I try to, I do, I try to read all the chats I can't read them all when I'm presenting, but I do, it's the first thing I read when the recording's over because I really liked all of your, you know, your feedback and things like that. And, and so that's always fun. So, um, so let's just go ahead and dive deep into this. So the reason I hold space for this container and call women together is because there is a, a need in the collective that I can see where women and men are waking up to their feminine essence. And this is not gender specific. So this is not, uh, I happen to help women, um, but this is not gender specific energy that I'm speaking to. So when we talk about feminine and masculine, we're going to dive deeper into that and what that really is. It's not mass it's not gender specific um, but there's a rise in the collective uh, a paradigm shift happening where so many of us are waking up to really fully embody our true authentic expression who we truly are uh, tap into that essence of who we truly are which is your feminine energy and this also um, and so this will just naturally unfold and make more sense as I share, but my goal for this is to really help highlight some of the toxic patterns that we can be stuck in, in this feminine, masculine, energetic loop, how to break free of that, because it's actually, once you break free of that, you come into alignment with feminine and masculine energies. You really, it's, they're two sides of the same coin. And so you really can't have one without the other. And so we're going to talk about some of the patterns. We're going to talk about some of the toxic loops. You were going to talk about what it feels or looks like to be lacking integrated feminine energy versus um, masculine energy. And we're going to talk about the dark feminine and what that really means. You may have some knowledge of that or research it. It's not evil or, or anything like that. Um, and so, yeah, we're going to talk about the wounded feminine and I'm going to switch this, uh, let this flow organically. So that being said, I'd love to know just in the chat box, put a one if you're brand new to this topic or put a 10 if you're like well versed on this, like you're ready to teach this, like maybe you're a coach yourself and you're ready to teach this. Uh, so 10 being like you're, you already like you're well versed in this and one, you're brand new. So where are you on a scale from one to 10? I always like to know that because it helps me gauge what to share uh, on this chat together. So perfect. So a lot of women just opening up to this concept and opening up to this, perfect. And then the other thing that I'd love to know, and I do read when you submit this, but sometimes people put very short, sweet answers. I just wanna know, um, I just wanna know uh, what really was the, uh, what was the catalyst that really had you book this call? Like, what was it that really popped and resonated with you? Whether it was something I said, whether it was something I wrote, some message you read, some video you watched, but like, what was it that really are you uh, motivated you to jump into this master class today? Was it just curious curiosity about feminine energy? Was it you're in the middle of a life transformational shift and you know it? Well, um, I'd love to hear that. shift perfect you're in the right place separation mm, that's interesting that's really interesting Tammy Ann 
Mm -hmm. mm, okay, perfect. All right, so let's go ahead and dive deep. So I'm just gonna share real quick a little bit about how I got here. So prior to being a mentor and a coach online, I help obviously with feminine embodiment. I also help spiritual entrepreneurs and healers create scalable businesses online. Prior to that, I was um, a real estate agent uh, and I was very much stuck in the hustle, a lot of burnout. I was um, going all up, very hyper masculine energy on the go, doing, doing, doing all the time until a point of exhaustion always chasing that proverbial carrot that was hanging outside of myself, whether that be success, money, a new car, a new life situation. So I was constantly chasing that, including chasing commitment from men. So chasing was a constant theme um, throughout my, my journey, um, which obviously, you know, so anyways, we'll dive deeper into that. I felt really guilty taking time off from myself. Um, I was constantly overworking. I had really poor boundaries, so very unhealthy boundaries with obviously um, my clients, my time, my energy, um, relationships. I numbed out a lot to wine or Netflix binges um, or going out with my girlfriends and sort of numbing out. Working a lot all the time, being a workaholic was also another way for me to numb out um, or I guess, keep busy, you know, right? So keeping myself busy instead of going inward. Um, so also I had a total lack of self-care at this point in my life. Um, uh, carrying the weight of the world on my shoulders, feeling like I had to do everything myself. Um, so I actually created a new persona for myself, which was Miss Independent. I could do everything on my own. I really pride myself on that back in the day where it was really like a badge of honor. So I'd pat myself on the shoulder for being able to take on everything, which really did feel like a weight on my shoulders, um, carrying the weight of the world of my shoulders. But that was really just another way for me to maintain control because I was, I was a control freak and I had control issues, which really just stemmed from a lack of trust. I wasn't able to trust myself and I wasn't able to trust others, whether that be assistants, employees, men, whatever the case may be. So I had to take on everything. I often wore a happy face, even when I wasn't happy. And that, that was happening a lot to the point where the universe started to reflect back to me, people like at the grocery store, they would say smile because I must've, you know, thought I was doing a good job keeping up appearances, but people could, they would just say, and it would trigger me. So of course the trigger, and then that would just upset me even more when someone tells you to smile and all you are is like, you want to just tell them to F off because like, you're not in the mood to smile because you got so much shit going on right now. So that's sort of what it felt like. Right. Um, so that was, I was easily ir irritable, um, or moved to anger or irritation when something wasn't going my way. So again, back to the control issues and that surface, uh, those emotions that were being suppressed that would bubble up as anger. Um, <clears throat> from the outside looking in, I really tried to keep up appearances. So I really tried to look as, as perfect as I could on the outside, um, but inside I was feeling depleted. So I was also a perfectionist. Um, and that was a lot of stress, as you can imagine. Um, so working all the time, hustling all the time, perfectionism, control issues, wearing, weighing the weird, wearing the weight of the world on my shoulders and really priding myself on that badge of honor as a badge of honor being a workaholic. Um, all of that started to wear on me where I started to develop stress related issues like um, IBS, candida, leaky gut, food allergies, adrenal fatigue, hormone imbalances, an immune system that was shot eventually. So I was getting multiple flus after another, and then that eventually landed me in the um, emergency room with walking pneumonia because I had no more immune, like my immune system was completely shot. Meanwhile, I'm still out there with the flu trying to, you know, selling houses, meeting clients, shaking hands, signing contracts, you know, <laughs> making money, you know, even though I was sick. So zero self-care, zero respect for my body, Zero respect for what I was going through. Zero respect for taking, it was not taking care of myself. I was not putting myself first. I was putting myself very, very, very last behind my clients, behind the job, behind the, the boyfriend and their needs, behind any other relationship. And um, on top of that, I was attracting men that were non-committal um, or they really lacked masculine energy because I was so much in my masculine energy that I would attract men that like, I would have to try to like, 
fire them up to get some ambition and drive and motivation going on because I was the driver. Um, so I was attracting men that were more in, in more passive or I was attracting non-committal men, um, which were really was really just a, a mere reflection reflecting back to me, my level of being open to receive and be vulnerable. Because at that point, my heart was very guarded. I had a lot of walls up. And so the only person that I could attract in, I, I attracted in the perfect partners that would never get too close to me, that would never make me get vulnerable or require me to have an open heart. So I would attract men that would naturally allow me to stay at arm's length because deep down what I actually craved was connection and intimacy. But it was also, without me knowing this at the time, was the thing that scared the shit out of me the most. And so I would naturally attract men that would allow me to stay in that guarded state by men that would never require me to be vulnerable, if that makes sense, right? So my solution was at one point, I wanted to sell everything and go to Costa Rica and I just do yoga on the beach, you know, get out, sell my house and things like that, which was an escapism, another thing that ego loves to do. So working all the time, you know, numbing out to why you're Netflix or going out with my girlfriends or staying busy all the time, um, escape, you know, all the control issues uh, or escaping, right? These are all ego tactics to keep us from actually doing the inner work um, and coming into alignment with our feminine essence, which again is not gender specific and we will get to that. But that was just a fancy form of escapism. On a deep, deep level, I found myself really craving ease, freedom, inner peace, harmonious relationships, and physical well-being. And at that point in my life, I had zero of those things. I was engaged to somebody that I was not in love with. Um, I had all of my health issues. My career was super stressful. I was just a hustleholic, right, all the time. It was zero self-care and zero time for myself, zero peace. Everything was chasing the next carrot outside of myself. So I actually found myself in the place where I had the opposite of everything that I deeply craved. So I had to get real with myself and make some changes. And so what my solution was, was I did end up going to Costa Rica, but I didn't move there. I ended up getting yoga certified. I ended up getting certified in energy healing. I started to open up spiritually. I had a spiritual awakening in 2012. Um, I cleaned up my diet. I went vegan for a year. I started traveling around the world, soul searching and doing things, really starting to just do some of the self inquiry work. And um, so I did a lot of solo traveling. And while some of those symptoms subsided, right, because we tend to attack things on the physical level first, because it's the tangible world that we can see, taste and touch, and we can start to see results quickly in the tangible world. Um, and it also keeps us from going into the emotional body or it keeps us going in inward so we can keep our focus externalized. So I was able to see results on the external plane for some, in some degree, my body started to heal. I, I, I healed my gut. Um, a lot of things started to happen. However, the patterns, the cyclical patterns of the revolving door of men that weren't respectful, uh, that weren't owning my true value or worth that um, or the stress, the stress, the stress uh, around work or the tendency to be a workaholic, um, those things still, those patterns still started to repeat. I still got myself stuck in overwhelm, burnout. I still would see my natural tendency would be to be in my head a lot and be a, a, a go, go, go kind of person and fail to give myself the self-care and respect that I needed. And so those cycles and patterns would continue. So I thought I had, I, I got to a certain level and I thought, oh, this is good. Now I'm good. And then another layer of the onion peels away. Right. And then, you know, next thing you know, I'm in another relationship and, and I end up getting like, I literally, I was like on a honeymoon kind of vacation in Hawaii. And literally the day we get back, like it's over, like just complete abandonment again. So abandonment wounds being triggered, um, all sorts of stuff happening. Again, thought I healed it, start, started, went through, you know, going through, but then more patterns started to still repeat, eventually leading me into the arms of a, nar a narcissist that was actually emotionally and physically abusive, which I never thought would happen to me. I thought I was so in, the, you know, strong and that would never happen. But yet 
I ignored red flags, got myself into a situation that was unhealthy and toxic and made excuses, painted all the red flags green, got into a situation that was not healthy. Luckily, it was very short lived and only lasted a few months and I left very quickly. Um, but that allowed me to look even deeper at what I was truly not allowing myself to see my own shadow, my own, my own um, things that I was unwilling to look at that I was putting band-aids on, you know, like going to yoga is great. Doing meditation is great. Eating clean is great. And I was doing all those things, but so many of those things turned into another, turned into band-aids that would just be something I would externally do to to provide myself very fleeting moments of peace or ease or give myself the sense that I was um, progressing, but yet it was not allowing me to really do, uh, really tap into my true authentic expression and own my truth, speak my truth um, and put strong, healthy boundaries in place. I was still very um, unable to do that um, for some reason. And so, one of the archetypes I like to talk about is the prostitute archetype. This is really the shadow lover archetype. The prostitute archetype is uh, the, you know, like a wounded feminine archetype where we um, constantly seek outside of ourselves for external validation. So we're constantly seeking outside of ourselves for external validation a false or false sense of safety, security, or approval in some way. And so, um, and so I was constantly seeking those things outside of myself, even with all of the band-aids, the yoga, the meditation, the yoga retreats, the being certified in yoga, the being certified as an energy healer, like all of those things, I was still doing that. And this was years after, you know, being on the quote unquote spiritual path and, and diving deeper into energy and on all those kind of things, because our ego is really, really good at not allowing ourselves to shine a light on aspects of ourselves that we don't want to see that keep us chasing, that keep us chasing that proverbial carrot outside of ourselves. And so what really started to break through was when I really, when I started to learn about feminine and masculine energy, which is really, like I said, not gender specific. And this is really the energy that creates our world. It creates the reality that we're living in. And this is going to make really a lot of sense in a minute when I dive into this. But first off, I want to open it up for any questions, comments. You can sh raise your hand by hitting the little reaction button if you want to speak. Um, or if you want to just put it in the chat box, that's fine too. I'd love to know, did anything I share about my journey and how I got here resonate with you? Um, and again, the chat box is always going to remain confidential. So whatever you put in there isn't going to go anywhere. If you do raise your hand and you do share, there is a chance that this could be shared on social media, on a YouTube channel. Um, but does anybody resonate um, with what I shared or have any questions or comments? So much similar, yes, so much, very similar journey. Sorry, I'm late coming in, but what I'm hearing definitely resonates. Perfect, you're in the right place. Yes, I can relate. Okay, yay, perfect, I'm glad. I mean, I don't, I'm not surprised. I'm happy uh, because these are very divinely guided containers. And I know the women that are meant to be here, I'm getting full body chills right now. Whoever's meant to be here, it's meant to hear something, even if there's this like one little nugget that's a takeaway for you. Very similar, that's where, why I'm here, I guess. Yes, I can relate and what I, and I want to help heal and help them. Perfect, perfect, okay. So let's continue. So, um, so let's talk about feminine and masculine energy really quick. So the feminine energy actually expresses in the subtle realm. So this is the realm of beingness. This is the going within. This is the realm you can't see, you can't taste, you can't touch. This is the essence, the core essence of who you are. This is your beingness. So the feminine um, expresses in the subtle realm. Remember when on my journey, I was going externally to fix all the things. I was doing the yoga, the meditation, the, the, you, know, the, you know, all the things, it was all external. Um, and yes, guided inward. I mean, the true path of yoga, for example, is really about going inward. It's not about the poses, but my ego would definitely take advantage of that and make it all about perfection again and poses and all the things, right? 
But the feminine energy expresses in the subtle realm, the masculine energy expresses in the physical realm, which is the, the realm of doing, which is the externalized world that we can see, taste, and touch. And because the masculine is externally focused, this is, you know, yin and yang energy, formless and form, spiritual and material. These are two sides of the same coin, but the masculine expresses in the externalized world. And so that is the easiest thing for our society to validate us through. It's what people can see. It's the car we drive, the money we make, the career we have, the relationship we have or don't have, the, the way we look, how we dress, all of these things. It's externalized. And then that is how most of us in this modern society that is externally focused, that dry, that has been running on masculine energy for so long, that is all about the doing and all about the results. It's like that story I shared. That's the easiest way for us to get the validation that we seek. That's where we chase the carrot. That's with a hamster wheel of life that we can get stuck on until we are nudged by spirit, consciousness, all that is unconditional love, infinity, all whatever you want to call it, God, whatever you want to call it, until we are nudged from within to go deeper, to turn the mirror back on ourselves, to go inward and start to connect with the essence of our heart and who we truly are at our core versus spend our time externally focused, chasing carrots, our whole life stuck on a hamster wheel. But our culture is designed to do this, right? And, and media and magazines and, and all the thing is designed to help us stack up against each other based on externalized things. So this is how our society and culture has validated ourselves uh, and how we can compare ourselves to others to say, okay, now I'm good enough. Now I'm worthy enough. So I can hopefully stop chasing now, but that never happens. Because when you're chasing and you're chasing to try to get the external validation and, this, and the thing outside of yourself, once you get that little carrot, there's another carrot. And then there's another carrot. So it's the carrot that's being, it's a, it's never ever ham, it's a never ending hamster wheel that you can't hop off of until you break the cycle of the toxic loops of the feminine and masculine energy and you come into alignment. That's when you can break the cycle. That's when the seeking outside of yourself starts to subside and you no longer need the relationship or the job or the career or the money or those things to validate you, which means when you don't need something, you can allow all of those things to come into your experience and enjoy them and have them in your experience because it's no longer be coming from a place of neediness and chasing and seeking to prove your own worth. Now you just get to have them in your experience because you enjoy them. So there's nothing wrong with any externalized success or anything like that. I don't believe that there's anything wrong with money or relationships and all the successes. You know, I love my luxury vehicle. It's fine. I love it. It's something that I feel really good about. You know, I enjoy it, but it doesn't define who I am. I don't need it to stack up to somebody else. Right. And that's something that is cultivated from within only. And so the feminine polarity, when you think about it expressing in the subtle realm, it's um, very intuitive, it's very empathic, it's very creative. Your creative energy is very feminine, like, like literally you can create a baby, like it's creative energy. Um, it's fluid, it's flowing, it's, um, if you think about nature, nature's a perfect example of this nature is very fluid and flowing and there's let me go let me um fluid and flowing and creative and there's also the cycle of death and rebirth happening in nature that's very effortless and easy and everything's working out and it's so effortless and you know so it's very flowing masculine polarity will represent um in the externalized world more logical tendencies. Um, uh, it's very giving, whereas the feminine energy is very receiving. It's very internalized. Masculine energy is very externalized, right? So it's very results oriented. It's very action oriented. It's very founda about foundations and structure versus fluidity and flow. And it's very intellectual and it's very powerful and strong on the external world, but just like the feminine in reverse would be, um, not reverse, but complementary, uh, would be very um, 
um, apples that be more empowered from within, empowered from within. So is that making sense? The feminine, if you think about it, can represent the laws of nature, the, the cycles and the flows, the ebbs and flows that you can't see, but yet it operates all things. It's um, the, the, the tide, it's the, it's, it's the moon even, the cycles of the moon even are very interconnected with your own feminine cycle, right? So it's this ebb and flow and fluidity that we can't see and taste and touch. It's like this rhythm, this flowing river that literally is infused into all things. And nature is a perfect example of this. Everything is working out and everything's in perfect harmony and everything's synchron, you know, synergistically connected. Um, the masculine would represent man-made laws or society laws, things that, built, that create structure in our, in our 3D reality. Um, the rules of society that we follow, these externalized rules that we use in order to um, provide structure and stability in our reality, which both of these are very needed. So this is not about masculine energy being bad. In fact, a woman that's really embracing and embodied in her feminine energy is going to have a very healthy masculine energy. Um, does that make sense? So just as a recap, masculine energy um, is very assertive, action-oriented, results-driven, logical in the mind, right? Protective, strong, very giving, structured, courageous. Masculine energy is very courageous. Taking action is, requires courage a lot of times. It's um, analytical, logical. I might have repeated a couple, some of some of these. Um, very again, doing and externalized and stable and resilient, right? Stability is a big thing with masculine energy. Whereas the feminine on the flip side of the coin, two sides of the same coin, trusting, expansive, embodied from within, empowered from within, creative, nurturing, sensual, fluid, empathic, very intuitive, right? And it's very much about being versus doing. It's very um, flowing and it's very vulnerable. So the number of one thing to understand is that the feminine energy desperately desires to feel safe. And this is what can put us in an, an um, an unhealthy uh, loop, one of the things. At the very, very core, the feminine energy requires us to feel safe. And so when we don't feel safe to be ourselves, to be authentic, to be vulnerable, to speak our truth, um, to share our voice with the world, to say yes when we mean yes, no when we mean no, to be feel safe in our body, to feel safe experiencing our emotions and recognizing that we're not those emotions, to feel safe in our core, to just to be safe, to feel safe to open our heart. When we don't feel safe, the masculine energy, the protector that it is, goes into overdrive and tries to protect that unsafe heart, that, un, that lack of feeling able to feel vulnerable, that lack of trusting. And so what we get in is this toxic loop. So the feminine energy, if it's if it's stuck in a toxic loop, will be very stuck in that prostitute energy that I said, where there's constantly the speaking outside of herself, very um, uh, externalized sense of seeking uh, validation, safety, security, or approval in some way. And so the needy feminine energy, the if if it's in play in your energy, if that archetype is active then the masculine energy is gonna go out and try to protect that. But it goes out in an overcompensating um, manner to protect um, a void that you perceive that you need filled. So it's protect, it's overcompensating for a perceived void that actually doesn't exist because we're trying to prove our worthiness or validate ourselves outside of ourselves. And that's actually a lie because we're already worthy. But as long as we're constantly seeking that outside of ourselves, I guess if you could, you know, and we're not really embodied in that worthiness, then the masculine energy is going to kick into overdrive to make sure it protects. And that could look like the overworking, like I mentioned before. It could look like staying busy all the time so you don't have time to go inward. It could look like um, always doing, doing, doing and on the go. It could look like a guarded heart. It will look like so many, a lack of vulnerability. It will look like control issues, right? It will look like people pleasing and over giving, right? It'll be over giving to others instead of just giving to others from a place of reciprocity. 
uh, where you're open to receive on the other end, it'll be over giving to others. Because if I can just give enough, if I can just please enough people, if I can just make this person happy, then I'll be loved in return. Then I'll be worthy in return. Then I'll be good enough in return. Does that make sense? And so all, a lot of this stems on our inability to really feel safe because at some point, you know, and this wounded energy bubbles up and no matter how much we think we heal until we're willing to look at it and finally uh, move through it, it will repeat the patterns over and over again. And in my experience, the patterns, even though I thought I was healing them, they actually just got worse and worse. They just came in at a different level until the point where I had no choice but to look at them again because I would just keep finding myself in situations where these patterns were just persisting. And so um, where was I? This is what I talk about. Um, this is a good time to open this up for discussion in a second, but it's so primed and ready for the dark feminine. The dark feminine is that part of us that we don't want to look at. It's, the, it's our shadow. And it's also the part um, that is related to the death and rebirth cycle that you see naturally happening in life and in nature. And it also represents, you know, the subconscious realm, the parts of us that, that when we say dark, think of the word shadow, think about shadow just being something that's not in our awareness, something that we're not shining the light on, something that we're afraid to look at, something that we feel um, makes us unworthy or not good enough, something that we hold shame around, something that we're guilty, feel that makes us feel guilty. Um, these different aspects of some, sometimes it's just an immense pain or hurt or anger or uh, sadness and loss and things that we haven't allowed ourselves to feel and release. And because we've had all of these very you very tricky ego mechanisms, coping mechanisms to keep us from actually going inward and allowing those things to surface and be released. And so because of that, we don't feel safe in our body. We don't feel safe in the present moment because the, pre and we don't feel, we, we don't feel safe being, we feel safe doing because doing is a big distraction for us. We don't feel safe being which is rejecting that feminine essence, which is deeply connected to her emotions and deeply connected to her inner essence and deeply connected to her beingness and in the feminine and in the present moment. So the mind and the ego are really good at, at coping mechanisms to keep us distracted for our entire life, if, if, if we allow it, um, from actually going in and allowing those things to surface and be released. So when we say dark feminine, this is our shadow aspect of ourselves that needs to be the, the light of awareness can be shined on that in order to fully feel it in order to fully allow it to be released from our system, from our body, because these things are actually stored in our energetic system and in our body. And you may have experienced releases at some point. I know I used to have a lot of releases in a yoga class and stuff where all of a sudden I'll just be crying and I don't even know why I'm crying, but it'll just be like a release. The body knows how to release these things without going into the story. The story is not helpful anymore. Whatever, you wouldn't even need to know the story. It's just about connecting with things as they arise and sitting with them and allowing ourselves to feel them and connecting with um, that part of ourselves that is whole and complete and connecting to our beingness and allowing those things to surface because otherwise we'll spend so much time putting a bandaid on, on them and that keeps us stuck in the toxic cycle. So when I said my big breakthrough was really stumbling upon and really in, in starting to work with and integrate feminine and masculine energy, recognizing that this is the yin and yang of life. The, I believe we come from oneness, source, infinite intelligence, consciousness, whatever you wanna call it. And so when we're having this 3D experience, how is that even happening if God is all there is, or love is all there is. In order to even have this experience we're calling life, this duality playing out, there had to be an opposite. So now, you know, feminine and masculine, up, down, left, right, front, back, good, bad, light, dark, all of these things. There's a polarity, there's an opposite. And this is what the feminine and masculine energy is speaking to. It's not speaking to gender. 
It's speaking to this feminine essence that exists in all of us and this masculine essence that exists in all of us that actually exists in all things. You can see this in nature. You can see this everywhere. This cup, for example, masculine, masculine, um, the masculine um, essence would be the structure of the cup, which gives it form and stability. And the spaciousness inside the cup, the void, the es the the part you don't even think about is where it holds all the fluid, right? It's like, the, it's, this is what makes it useful. This is the whole, you can't have one without the other. You can't have one without the other in order for this to be. And so for an order for us to be, and this is really the spiritual realm manifested in physical form. And we see this spontaneously happening in our entire world, you know, the entire 3D world that we see comes from source, whatever that is, right? And so that's just my belief. I don't wanna project it on anybody, but when we think of that feminine and masculine energy, I wanna really stress that this is not a gender specific thing. It actually exists in all of us and men and women both are um, opening up to embodying this on a deeper level. I just happen to help women, but this is happening in, um, in what, what doesn't matter what gender. So for example, when I stated that a, a woman that's really deeply in her feminine power is gonna have a strong masculine, here's an example of someone that a feminine energy would be an example of getting in touch with your intuition and getting in touch, touch with your truth, your truth, your inner value system, what you truly honor, what you truly value, your truest expression. So let's say it's around values. Let's say you get in really connected to your intuition and your values and something's feeling off, something's feeling not right. I, this is what always gets me into trouble, not listening to that, not honoring my feminine, right? The masculine energy draws that line in the sand and draws that protection and has a firm yes or a firm no. So if you recognize a woman that's what enters a room and she's fully embodied and she's magnetic and she, magnetism is actually the opposite of the prostitute archetype, by the way but she's magnetic and she's fully empowered and she owns her truth and her worth. She has no problem saying no to somebody. She doesn't feel bad about it. She doesn't feel guilty about it. She doesn't, she's not a people pleaser. She's not over giving her time away, right? She can give to somebody, but from a place of sovereignty where she's not self-sacrificing in the process. And she can say healthy no or healthy yes without feeling guilty or without feeling that inner urge to comply or appease or make someone happy at her own expense. And that's because she has a strong inner uh, alignment with her feminine and she has a strong masculine because that masculine is going to set the boundary. That masculine is going to take the action. That masculine is going to say yes or no. Remember it's externalized. So anything that's happening in the externalized world in order to protect that healthy value or protect that worthiness or protect that, that you know, her truth or what she's really feeling um, is gonna require a healthy masculine. There's no room for weak masculine energy with a feminine empowered woman, right? There's both happening because it's not gender specific. Does that make sense? Does anybody, um, I'm gonna look at the chat real quick. Does anybody wanna comment, share regarding what we just, you know, anything that I've covered so far, I'd love any questions, comments. If I, I know that you may not wanna share because this can this is being recorded. Um, and possibly repurposed. But if you do want to share, you're more than welcome. Um, I'd love to see in the chat box. So does any of this resonate? Um, and, does, and if there's any questions in the chat box, you can throw them in the chat box and I'll still answer them. So even if you don't, if you want to stay anonymous, feel free, you can just throw it in the chat box and I'll answer it. So questions, comments, or anything like that, throw in the chat box. I'm going to look at that right now for a second. Um, yeah, I feel very in my masculine energy and want to soften to my feminine essence. I feel like I'm in the middle of a huge shift in my life. Perfect. Well, this was this was definitely the class for you. I feel. I hoping. I hope you're getting value and there's some nuggets that are resonating. Um, being addicted to it, not slowing down. Per, yeah, this is a tricky way. What you be, not being able to rest and being addicted to the work or and not being able to slow down is the ego's way to keep us stuck and not going inward. And why would we not go inward is 
you know, like what's, you know, so this is such an amazing transformational process is why I'm so passionate about this. I don't know if you've ever heard the quote um, by Carl Jung. He's a big into mythology and archetypes and I love his work. Um, he has a quote, a pretty famous one, the, the um, cave you fear to enter holds the treasure that you seek. So when you think about that quote, it really depicts a lot about what I'm talking right now because, um, you know, it's about being able to um, allow life to be present. So it's like, how much duality can we hold? You know, because we're going to have ebbs and flows. That's part of life. We're going to have ups and downs, duality, up and down, ebb and flow. We're going to have highs and lows. As a human in this, three, in this 3D dualistic experience, we're going to have all that. But if we only embrace the highs or we only embrace the accolades or the successes, and then we use those as tools to try to keep ourselves focused on that, and we can't sit in the sadness, we can't sit in the hurt, we can't honor the loss, we can't sit in the betrayal, we can't sit in what we're feeling, we can't sit in it. We can't honor the anger that comes up. I was super angry. And part of that was because I was abandoning myself we tend to have a lot of build up anger if we're suppressing our own voice over time. It's very much tied to the throat chakra, um, not expressing our truth, not sharing our truth, um, saying yes when we mean no. So completely denying my own needs and completely abandoning myself and not honoring myself and betraying my own self, that causes a lot of anger and irritation, which is why I was naturally drawn to anger and irritation. I don't know who needs to hear that. I just felt like that was something that was said earlier. Um, and that's why I was drawn to anger and irritation because there was so much unprocessed shit below the surface that I never wanted to sit with, that I never wanted to be with, that I was always trying to avoid because, and the thing that, the funny thing is, is when you finally shine the light on it, it's sort of like a haunted house. The haunted house is only scary in the dark. When it's all dark and all you can see are the scary little goblins and all the things. As soon as you turn the light on and you shine the light of awareness, this is a metaphor, obviously, but as soon as you turn the light on in a haunted house, there's nothing scary about it anymore. And, the, and it's so it's so powerful because the things that we really do fear are that's you know what Joseph Campbell was alluding to will keep us on this hamster wheel our whole life. Um, and once you finally shine the light on them, you're like, oh. And you can, I, I remember one time I was having a release. It was during the midst of a spiritual a Kundalini awakening. So a lot was coming up because I was wide open and there was just this level of shame, so much shame that I couldn't even stand to be in my own skin. And I didn't even really know why that I was, I was having this experience. And I was pulling up nonetheless to a yoga class. And part of me was like, oh my God, I'm going to be the shittiest yogi. Like I got all the way here. You know, they always say getting here is like the hardest part. And now I'm sitting in my car and all, and I, and I couldn't go in. And so I was like, I should just go in, you know, that's what, you know, I'm already here. And it was like, but I was having so much heavy shame. It was like a cloud of shame that I was just a cloud of shame that I was sitting in to the point where if I went in, I wasn't even going to be able to look anybody in the eye. I was just going to like, I was just like, can I even scoop by with people not noticing me? You know, like that was happening. And I was like, I had no choice, but to sit in my car. I sat in the car for like 45 minutes, just in a cloud of shame and just sat and allowed it to release. I just sat there in it. I experienced it instead of like my, the universe was not giving me another choice to be honest. Cause if I had a choice to run at that point, I would have but like running made me feel even more um even worse like having to talk to people or so I had no choice but to just sit there there was nothing for me to do there was no work I could do I wasn't going to yoga like I was trapped in my car is what it felt like and I was forced to feel all of this shame the shame that we can carry from yeah things that have happened over life but also just the shame that we've naturally acquired by even from when we were young um, and assuming things about ourselves that aren't true, hearing, you know, like whatever. Like there's so many ways that we can acquire this, um, the, these sensations and then think that that's like who we are. And then it's never healthy to express them. It never feels safe to express them. I'm saying, I shouldn't say it's never healthy to express them. It never feels healthy to express them. It feels painful 
to express them. It feels like the worst thing ever, you know, but when we allow ourselves to sit in them, that's, that's the shadow. Like that's the part that I wanted to run from. That's the part I didn't want to sit in. That's the part that was making me feel so unsafe. And if I could have done anything in that moment to get rid of it, I would have, but it was like the universe was showing me like exactly like what I needed at that time to make a huge leap forward and to release so much um, energetic. It's just energy. It's literally just energy. Our emotions are energy. Our thoughts are energy and we are energetic beings. We don't even have to understand where it's coming from. And, and to be honest, the story doesn't matter. It's just about allowing shit to surface and finally allowing that to clear so that we can move on. And then, I've ne you know, it felt like such a, a relief. Like when it was over, it was like cloud. It was like the cloud just dissipated. And I was like, did that even happen? Like it's like it's over. Like did that even happen? But it was like the most it was like the most fearful fearful experience in the moment. Um, like super uncomfortable, very very uncomfortable. Um, but when it was over, it sort of just dissipated, and it was like I was free, you know. And I don't even know what it was it, where it was coming from. It didn't matter, and that's the thing. It doesn't even matter. And so um, it's just a matter that our, it's just that our body is ready to release these things. And if you're called to this kind of content and you're like, oh, and you're getting uncomfortable and fear, you know, like that's part of the process. Cause like our mind and our ego is never going to be like, yeah, let me just go dive in to all of the mucky parts that I never want to see that I never want to think about, like, or the parts of myself that I want to avoid. Um, the ego and the mind is never going to do that, but but our soul, our soul is calling us to that and our body is ready for that. And so that's part of this process. So let me see, I see a hand up. Let me go ahead and let me look at this chat real quick if there's anything else. I do not know enough about this subject and felt like it meant to be when you invited me to go in. Oh, I love that. Oh, I love that, perfect. Uh, men have described me as being very rough. Yeah, men have described as being very masculine. Yes, I was, I was very stuck in masculine energy and that does not work at calling in a very empowered masculine man that honors you, you know, like that holds space, that allows you to feel safe, that creates stability and, and you know, uh, wounded feminine energy does not call it in and not, neither does hyper-masculine energy. Um, uh, I can totally relate with that, so. Yay. Okay, so someone's on the twin flame journey here. So I get that. I'm assuming it's a twin flame journey. I am also on the twin flame journey. It's very, it's very interesting. Very, very interesting. So, and I have a lot to share about that. There's probably gonna be a whole course in the book coming out of specifically about that. Okay, so let me go ahead and take the question and then, um, yeah, I love all your questions, all your comments in the in the chat. I'm just scanning it for questions. So what gets you leaning to one end more than another? Feminine and masculine. We're gonna dive deep. There's gonna be a section after I take um, Chelsea's question. Um, we're gonna like, I'm gonna give you an exercise where you can start to discern if you're lacking integrated feminine versus masculine energy. And so I will share that here in a second, and then we can definitely open it up for. The quote again from Carl Jung was, the cave you fear to enter holds the treasure that you seek. Yes, so instead of avoiding the shadowy stuff, we need to bring it to light and take its power away. Yes, the light of awareness and bring it and it, and it depowers it. It totally depowers it. I also like working with archetypes. And so when you activate the opposite archetype, so for example, the prostitute archetype I said is really just the shadow archetype of the lover. So there are about, there are like five or six um, um, main feminine archetypes that I like to work with. And one of them is the lover. The lover archetype, she knows her worth. She she takes care of herself. She self nurtures. She has, um, she speaks her, you know, speaks her truth. Um, she values herself. And so it's the opposite of the prostitute archetype. So when, when these archetypes are in play, are at play in our field and there's, there's 
the, the opposite archetype is the one that we want to activate. And archetypes are just fancy words for saying like energetic imprints. Think of that like energetic imprints. And so when one is, you know, in its shadow, when you have a shadow archetype, because each one has its own shadow, it's about activating that opposite archetype. And it's really just energetics, just like the emotions and the thought, everything's energy. So it's really just like an energetic imprint. So this is energetic work more than it is anything else. Um, does that make sense? And awareness is in, yes, shining the light of your awareness is what depowers the fear. It depowers the fear and it also um, takes this power away. Um, like this, those are the same thing as depowering the fear and taking your power away, same thing. Um, okay, so Chelsea, thank you for waiting, go ahead. I know the alarm just rang, um, so I just wanna, uh, make sure we still, I still have a few minutes. If you guys do, I want to take your questions. So Chelsea, go ahead. Um, so I'm just wondering like where to start. I feel like I've been so in my masculine body. Like I've been on this journey for probably three months and I've been doing embodiment practice and going to breath work classes and really trying to like release emotions. Um, but sometimes it feels like even with all of that, like the masculine is still so overpowering um, that I can't fully reach like my feminine essence. And it's almost like I'm split and like the feminine is there, but my masculine is like so logical that it just shuts that down. So I just like don't even know where to start. So how does it shut it down? Just by being like more logical um, and like the structure and the busyness. Um, mm -hmm. And so I just, I feel like shadow work might be a good place to start, but I just don't know what that looks like. Yeah. So shadow work is, I, I feel like shadow work is the last place that we would look, right? I love the fact that you're doing um, things to open up your energetic field, like you were doing uh, breath work right? Yes. So that energy gets flowing. I love that. I love anything that supports anything that you're feeling called to do that gets your energy flowing, that gets, that gets you tapped into your body that gets, you know, so I love going to like gong meditations and stuff like that. It's on a very cellular level, opening you up to the state of beingness. So these are great tools, but ultimately what I'm sharing in this is that the shadow work cuts straight to the core of the things that we try to hide from. And then that sort of keeps the fear, uh, it keeps us embodying this fear on a more subtle level because it's the awareness that can shine a light on that. And so we can be doing lots of Band-Aid things and still not do the deep inner work. Um, and it's not about inner work, like, like diving deep into stories and unraveling and going down every single can of worms. You can go down as far as traumas and dramas and all of those things. The stories don't matter. And that's a big, that's a one, um, one thing that I feel is a potential risk doing inner work with a lot of people, which I see in the healing community is that you can go down a rabbit hole of healing, like your whole life and always find something that's broken or, or not right and things like that. And so this is about releasing the shadows, going inward, right? But uh, allowing yourself to, you know, not get stuck trapped in the stories and the dramas and the traumas, dramas, traumas, blame game, all of those things in the mind, you know, um, and, and do the shadow work, right? So like the shadow work, I would, you know, to answer your question, if you were to incorporate shadow work with, what you're doing now, then I feel you're going to add in that other layer. And for the same reasons that, you know, I shared with my example, sitting in the car, it was the last place that will go. It's the last place that will go. And this is really just the wounded feminine energy because the feminine is the essence that is connected to our body and it's connected to our emotions, but yet we are not our emotions. We're not our thoughts. We're not our body, but being able to go inward into that re in inward and allow things to surface without rejecting them without resisting them. Cause our first knee jerk reaction is to reject it, resist it, or go find a coping mechanism. So rejecting it, resisting it, or, or snack, or, uh, you know, finding a coping mechanism. So awareness of what your coping, coping mechanisms are first off is then going to allow you to go deeper. And so then you can even do your coping mechanism if you need to with awareness, but like if you're tapped into the feeling that's arising, so this would be just a tip, right? Like tap into the feeling that's arising and go deeper into that feeling. So instead of like running, avoiding coping mechanism, 
or any of the other sneaky stuff that the ego likes to do, fuck it. If it's fear, if it's, if it, I mean, if it's anger, if it's shame, if it's loss, if it's betrayal, let's just feel it. Let's just go in it. Let's like, how much, how much can I allow myself to sit in and be present with to finally get through that? You know what I mean? So recognizing that urge to go put a bandaid on it, seeking something outside of yourself that's soothing in order to put a bandaid, uh, in order to temporarily put a fix on it. That's why I'm using the word bandaid because it's always going to circle back. And so this is about doing the shadow work and diving deeper into the parts that are uncomfortable that we don't want to feel, which will natural, naturally arise when you're doing things like breath work or doing a yoga class or doing, um, you know, a gong meditation or anything like that or sound healing or something like that. These things will arise, but whether or not we suppress them or put a bandaid on them or um, latch onto a coping mechanism is going to be what is different so yeah so shadow work for sure I, I feel like and this is just energy and this is yeah so working with that and um does that make sense does that help yes um I was gonna say do you have any tips because I feel like the masculine so just like the last part of that um I I'll get a feeling but rather like I don't know how to just sit with the feeling my brain automatically is going to the story of why I'm like I focus on the story so much that I feel like maybe that's why I cannot work through the feeling yeah because the mind going to the mind is that masculine energy that's a big tell for me too is going up into the mind going up into the story going up into the lot into the narrative is a way to keep us from going inward and so this is about like this is embodiment practices, right? Like this is where it's like, when you have awareness that you're going into the story and you have awareness that you're going into the narrative, like awareness is everything. Awareness is who we are. Awareness, this is literally like the shining the light of consciousness because you are consciousness and now we're shining it back on itself so it can diffuse its power, right? Over the shadow. Um, so so yes, yeah, so this is this is just part of the work and to constantly be doing that, you know, and it gets easier, but at first it can be uncomfortable and then it gets easier. So just like anything, it's a habit. So it's like really making sure that like when you feel the, when you're triggered, when there's a trigger, when there's um, an emotion coming up, when there's something uncomfortable, like all of these are good when you go into your mind and mental chatter and you recognize it, like these are all gateways. These are gold. So when the trigger comes, bless the trigger, right? Because the trigger now will showed us somewhere where we were, had constricted energy around something. And, and um, yeah, the other thing I can really say is relaxing the nervous system is a big part of this too. Um, you're not, your nervous system will naturally release as you feel more safe in your body. Um, and also, you know, so things that will, you know, relax the nervous system. I like to do those things as well. You know, I, I love yoga Nidra for that reason, but your, your nervous system will start to settle and then you can start to feel safe, even in uncomfortable things. This isn't to say that, you know, so anyways, I think that answers your question initially. And, and that is a good segue for, um, that's a good segue for the, the offer that I do have for you. If you do want to take this deeper, you guys will get an email about this. Or if you're watching this somewhere online, there's going to probably be a link either above or below this video um, for Embody the Empress. Embody the Empress is a divine femme immersion. It is an embodiment program that is filled with diving deeper into the archetypes learning more about feminine and masculine polarity and how that plays out in our dualistic world that we live in and how to come into alignment with feminine and masculine. So you're going to have more, uh, really understand the feminine and masculine on an energetic level. And then we're going to go into the archetypes and each archetype has its shadow, which can be expressing and you'll resonate more with some archetypes than others. And each one has its own power version. And these are energetic imprints that can be activated. So this is another answer to Chelsea's question is when you recognize which archetype is at play, you can start to embody the power archetype, which has its own set of qualities. And that's, the, you know, it's still bringing awareness to it and it's helping you shift. So I like to work with archetypes in this process and then also provide embodiment practices where this is like, you know, for the next week or two, like this is Chelsea's homework, right? To be so consciously aware of where of her triggers, of her emotions that are coming up, of what she's currently avoiding, um, and 
the feelings in her body and the sensations as they arise and not resisting them or pushing them away and being able to hold that duality and being able to hold those sensations. Um, this doesn't, you know, and, and recognizing the need to resist or reject or to seek outside of your, some kind of, some kind of coping mechanism kicking in. So this is homework, right? Like this is, this is, this is it. It's not, there's no quick fix. It happens and then it gets easier. And then, and then the, the funny thing is, and when you set on this path, your soul's not, you didn't bring you to this call on accident if it resonates, right? And so you're already energetically on board to do this work, like from whatever called you or intuitively nudged you to be here, if this is resonating. Um, and so what happens is the universe, it's a phenomena and I love it. And the universe has a very beautiful way of reflecting back exactly what he needs to be experienced in order for you to have the perfect opportunities to um, clear this, right? And like move through this, right? So the universe is supporting us in that. And so this is when, you know, you'll have things that will just naturally arise um, and it's just perfect timing and it's just divine time. And like th that thing happens. So you're, you're already supported in this process. Um, if you want deeper support and you want to be in a container with other women learning about this kind of stuff and embodiment practices and learning about the archetypes, their shadows and their power version and really working through this, um, Embody the Empress is a divine femme live immersion where I'll be dripping out trainings like this. And there's two options. You can join just the immersions where you have access to all of the live trainings and live Q and A's uh, or once and I want you to have access to that. That's sort of like a requirement because that's the foundation. So that's one thing. But then if you enroll, there's an immediate um, bonus where you can add three monthly mastermind calls on top of your membership. So that way you can sit in a call like this with other women and get your questions answered and go through the process with me and get my, uh, you know, eyes and ears on what's coming up for you to really, so think of it, it's like a mastermind community, but I do laser coaching on it. So very similar to this, so we can dive deeper into your situation. So, so that's an option. So if you're interested in Body the Empress, I do have a link for you. I will pop it in the chat box so you can open it up and read it. And then I will also email you to the email that you registered with. And so let me get that for you. Where is it? I should already have it open, so I apologize. Um, here it is. So I will pop this in here. Go ahead and read this, the you know, the details of it and see if that resonates. See if, you know, check in with yourself if this master class resonated. You know, I'll send you some emails. And if that resonates, then, you know, let's dive deeper and let's do this. You know, that's what it is. So it's embody the empress. And the whole point is to go from this wounded feminine prostitute archetype through the process of really like working through the various feminine archetypes and really embodying your full empress energy. And your empress energy is your divine feminine energy. And that is, you know, that is where you speak your truth. You honor your values. You have strong boundaries in place, right? You're you show up authentically, you live in the present, right? You're not stuck in the stories anymore. You live, you trust your intuition, you know your worth, you're clear on your values, you're open to receive, you know, the wall around your heart is is being taken down, right? The boundaries, it's good to have boundaries, um, but we tend to overcompensate with a boundary that doesn't let any of the good stuff in if we're stuck in this overcompensating armored up kind of place for whatever reason, because we're not able to trust and be vulnerable and be open, largely because we don't feel safe in some area for whatever reason, which is why we need to feel safe in our body. Um, it's good to have boundaries up that allow us to have the good stuff come in, right? Not just an overcompensated wall around our heart that doesn't let anybody in. So it's um, a really um, comprehensive, so it's gonna have um, trainings, embodiment practices, and an option once you enroll to upgrade. You get that option one time. It's only offered once. If you wanna upgrade, you can add three mastermind calls so you can integrate with me um, for three months. And that's offered to you after you enroll. At one time you get to, you get to um, select that option. So does anybody have any questions before we jump? I know it's 
it's so it's we're a little over time right now but does any other, anybody have any other questions or comments and then i definitely will read the chat box it's the first thing i do once the recording's over because i love all the feedback and everything in the chat box and so much good stuff in there so i will see your messages um, for sure yeah you're welcome You're welcome. Yay, you're welcome. So if there's no more questions and you wanna take this deeper, feel free to reach out to me. In the emails that I send you, there'll be a link from Body the Empress and there'll also be um, a link to my Facebook or, or Instagram so you can message me and we can chat it out in the DMs if you are not sure about Embody the Empress and you wanna learn more, then we can just chat it out um, or even hop on a quick video chat or something like that. Um, so just reach out to me. I'm here to answer any questions so you can make an informed decision. Yes, and I do wish all of you, and I mean, if this is where our journey ends, oh, it's 11-11. We just got how many comments at 11-11? I love it. We're actually ending this at 11-11. That's perfect. The how, I mean, can you guys write this any better? I mean, seriously, can you even write this any better? Universe is amazing. So I will see you guys hopefully inside and body the Empress, but if you have any questions, feel free to reach out and we can talk soon. Namaste.